have that's so nice. Of the Father, we are joined hands with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. Oh, we are hands of the Father. People may say, oh, because I don't have a car, I don't have money, I don't have the job that I'm looking for, God hasn't done enough for me. But I want to tell you this morning that he has given you something very important and very expensive, yet he gave it to you for free. He has given you a life. If you don't have life, how can you work? The money that you want to spend, if you don't have that life, how can you spend it? I want you to bless the name of the living God this morning, for he has done enough for us. He has done more than enough, and we can thank him enough. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. We bless him. Bless him. We thank you, Jesus. We adore, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. heavens hear your voice this morning come on release it let the heavens hear your voice bless his holy name bless his holy name bless his holy name And never 
everything is you. Precious Jesus, I want. Can I go from your spirit? How can I flee from your presence? If I enter the sun, you are there. And if I enter the moon, you are there. And if I enter the sea, you are there. Just as you are there. Everywhere. Lord, I see you right there In the beauty of nature You shine all around For you are everything And everything is you Precious Jesus I want to I know you are here, here in your glory. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here, here in your power. I know. Precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, here in your glory, Lord, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, Lord, we know you are here, here in your power. Precious Holy as steady and from the waters of my soul, longing as steady for you.
the beginning. You want me God alone most time. Your hidden glory in creation is now revealed in you. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. Only you. 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 Only you.
seal and chanting for the rest of the day. For you are my Abba and your darling is singing. I will be singing and dancing and chanting for the rest of the journey till the end is over. But it's only you. Lord and Master. 
Master Jesus, we bless your name this morning. Indeed, oh Lord, whatever we have right now, it is by your grace and we bless you for that. We bless you, we praise you. You have been good to us. We thank you, we thank you, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We love that you have to say amen. I want you to make a joyful noise to the Lord. If you are blessed, if you know you are blessed this morning, make a joyful noise.
praise our maker. We will praise the Lord with all that we have in us, with our strength, with our mind, with our body, and with everything that the Lord has given unto us. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Savannah, and then the team for such a powerful praise and worship. May the Lord continue to strengthen and enlighten you. Amen. All right. I'm moving on to announcement. We have a really long and short announcement, so it's just straightforward. Um, since we just ended our week long fasting and prayers, we are going back to our Wednesday and Friday um, prayers. So God willing, this coming Friday, we will meet online at 8 to 9 p.m., and the same thing, we will meet online for our power prayer service on Friday from 8 to 9 p.m. We will have a movie game night coming up this month, which is like two weeks away. This two weeks is coming. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for clapping. Um, I know for the past, it has been amazing, and God is going to use this movie to be a blessing. So let's keep note of it. And then on the 16th of March, that we will all meet here and come and enjoy the movies. Just put it on your calendar so that we will mix it and we will come and celebrate with the team. This is all the announcement that I have for today. Um, for Thanksgiving, we bless the name of the Lord for his protection, for his mercies, for his favor, for his love and the strength he has given unto us um, for us to be alive today. It's, it's, it's a great blessing. We thank all the people of, of February for the life the Lord has brought us. We have a lot, so many birthdays this month. You know, I couldn't just go with that, Minister Martha. Yes. You know, she, yeah, so everyone, each one of you, we love you. We celebrate you. I know. I keep looking at even everybody's faces. Because yeah. there's like so many, so many people. May the Lord bless and bless and bless you. May the Lord let this new year, this added year, bring so much oil, so much anointing, so much favor, so much breakthrough in everything that you do. Amen. 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 Um, at this very moment, I'm going to call for a song ministration. So with so much joy and excitement, I want this is special. This one, there is oil, there is ink in it because it's coming from my house. Yes, yes. So with so much assignment, may you help, may you help me work on my wife, Molini, to come and give us some inspiration. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. God is so wonderful. God is so good. The song says, Lord, I'm amazed by how you've shown me mercy. I'm amazed because you show me mercy. There are things that you know you are deserving of punishment, yeah? But God shows you mercy. You know there are things that should have destroyed your life. But God shows you mercy. So we would be people who are ungrateful if we don't come back to say thank you, God. You show me mercy. Even through attacks, you show me mercy. Your blood speaks for me. Your blood speaks for me. I don't know if there's anyone that could testify that God, God speaks for you. There are things that could overpower you and destroy you. But because of his mercy, because of his grace, you are here. because of you it's all because of your grace that I'm still standing here right now it's all because of you it's all because
because of your love that I'm still standing. It's all because of you. It's all because of your grace that I'm still standing here right now. It's all because of you. It's all because of your love that I'm still standing. Could have lost my way. I could have fallen.
And the 24 elders. Can you even imagine? It's a man. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See, I, I can sit under that kind of ministration and go on and go on and on and on. But there is time and place for everything. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of God? Then make some noise unto the Lord. Woo! Amen. Now, how many of us fasted this week? 
speak the truth though. How many of us fasted? Why are you laughing? Amen? If you have fasted and you've waited on the Lord, may the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Without much ado, may we be on our feet with a shout of joy and with a clap. We will invite our speaker for this morning. Come on, make some noise. Make some noise. Yeah, let, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! Yes, come on. yes, 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 yes. We we'll invite Apostle Are you in a Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. New directions, new directions. Hey, yeah, why do you? Yeah. Hey, the word of God is so powerful. The word of God is so powerful. It's deeper than someone in any other world. Come on, come on, let's go. I said noise to noise, noise to noise. Come on, noise to noise, hey, noise to noise. Say fire to fire. Hallelujah. Oh, come Who on, continue to make a joyful noise the Lord unto Lord. the Lord. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Yes. It is all yes. about Jesus. It is all about Jesus. It is all about Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to first of all salute the Bishop, Bishop John Huafo, and Mommy, where they find themselves now. <laughs> We appreciate them and we say may God continue to empower them and honor them greatly. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, we present our bishop and mommy before you. Continue to empower them, preserve them, and honor them mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's appreciate Minister Mata for... Dedication to this vision and assignment. Amen. In my spirit, I, I could feel there are great men of God here, though I can't see, but in my heart, I feel there are great men of God here. I salute each and every person here. Amen. Please take your seat. I know you can see me clearly, but uh, I uh, are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. I want us to trust God for this beautiful day. I have come to believe that if church does not bring the best out of you, if church does not make you a better person, the devil is going to knock you hard. If church, you've been in church for one year, two years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you are still the same Kofi, Kojo, Ama, Lenda, Abena, you are still the same, then always know that the devil will definitely have an assignment to destroy people and destroy yourself. And so by this stage and time, you must allow church to work on you. You must allow church to bring the best out of you. You must allow church to make you a better person. Your email sound like you're against me. Are you with me? If church does not make you, because your job will not make you that such a person. Your home may not make you that good. If church does not form you, mold you, 
Let me begin by break you and mold you and bring the best out of you. It, it, it all depends on you. You must allow yourself for church to work on you. You know why? Because he didn't say we are just in that class for our family or our area. He said, for we are the salt of the earth. And we are the light of the earth. Hallelujah. And so anytime you come to church, you must work on yourself. You must trust God. You must, you must put yourself in the arena where church will bring the best out of you. Hallelujah. Kindly turn your Bibles together with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Yesu kami hum. Nachi remi kwa impa. Ema wasempa. Kani ya endu wami muda ampara ema wasempa kani ya endu wami muda misi Yesu kaya hon ampara. Nachi reyen kwa impa Oine ema wasempa Kania endu mwoye Manindu mwoye mu Oine ema wasempa pana Kania Si Yesu kaya ho Ampara Na chire yen Chire yen kwa impa Aine Ema wasempa Aniya Endu Mwoye Muda Ema wasemno Ema wasempa Kami ya endu waye muna mami ya bura ube tumia samusio ama wana sukundi mami ya bura ube tumia Azamuzio, eh, ama wana sukundi. Sese miu, minya mi, sese mi, ah, sese mi, wongkongkong, sese mi, ah, ma minya bura, ubetu mi, azamuzio. Ama wana sukundi Misi mami nye bura Ube tumia asa muzio Ama wana sukundi Enti siye siye miyo Minyanku pon siye siye mi Siye siye mi Wongo cross yes ye me apara mami nye bura ube to me asemusio ama wana sukondi mi antifa minsi ye ima chengkwa kosi se Echa inguru ampara 
Shemisu Omasitme Nasem to Jidanji and Tifa Missi Ye Majinka Go see Sir Ampara Shemisu Oma Sitme Nasem to Mamina Bura Ube to me, I said, Ube to me, I said, Monsieur. I'm Father, for we have come from afar to have an encounter with you. Glorify yourself among us that all men will know we are serving the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give a mighty clap of hand to Jesus. My first time seeing her, but when she was leading the worship, her praises, I said, ah, don't we have some people dancing in this house? Nobody, everybody was in this corner and uh, doing their own thing. I said, wow. Nobody came out with that class of songs she was singing, connecting it to left and right, the center, and uh, the worship and everything. And we were all standing and shaking our body, including me, you know. But I was waiting for you to step out for me to join. I was just waiting. I am a visitor. Oh. <laughs> I got joy, 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 joy overflow in my heart. Come on. I got joy, 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 joy. Joy, joy, joy. I don't expect you to stand again. I in my singing, I got joy. I got joy, 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 joy overflow. Come on, do you really have a joy in my I got joy, I got joy, 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 joy. Hey, 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 hey,
see me dancing? Yes. Yeah. There is somebody in the hospital who can't even lift up the hand. Mercy. Can't even lift up the leg. But if by the grace of God we can, then let everything that has breath Amen. praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to salute my senior um, right reverend Nana Sefa. Oh, come on, let's appreciate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, he, 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 he texted me, said, I am with you in the spirit. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. And the child, 1 Samuel chapter 5, 1 Samuel chapter 3, the verse number 1 to 7. And I want us to trust God as the word of God is coming to us. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass that at that time, when Eli was laid down in, the pl in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And that, that the child... Okay, and... The word and the lamp of God went out in the temple, verse 3, of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep, verse 4. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, or Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou calleth me. And he, he said, I called not, laid down again, and he went and laid down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and, and said, Here am I, for thou calleth me. And he answered, I called not my son, laid down again. Verse 7, the last one. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, 
neither was the word of the Lord revealed to him. I have come to believe. And it is very important as believers we understand that your knowledge about God determines the gravity in which he will pour himself in your life. Your knowledge about this God, this Elohim, your knowledge about this God that to whom what is the reason why you are here, your knowledge about him determines how much he pours himself into you. And you must understand that as we go in and come in and out, what is so important to God is your availability for him to pour himself into your life as individual and as Christians. If your knowledge about him is shallow, you will always find yourself in the state that you will not be comfortable as a child of God. If your knowledge about God, about Jesus Christ is shallow, I'm not talking about intellectuals. No, I am not talking about class or education knowledge. I am talking about knowing him on your personal level. Your knowledge about God determines how much he pours himself. Listen, the difference between Christians, Christian A and Christian B, is how much knowledge you have about him and how much he pours himself in your life. Remember, if your knowledge about him, if your relationship with him is not up to date, up to tax, up to the level that he wants, you will not be able to enjoy what he has deposited to us for you to enjoy. And so it is very, very important we understand there are Christians who know God but do not fear him. And there are Christians who fear him and do not know him. When you must come to the level where you must be able to position yourself, where you fear him and you know him better, your knowledge about him and how you build your relationship with him determines the gravity in which he pours himself in your life. Are you with me? Now, I just want us to tackle this scripture quickly for us to understand. The Bible says that, and Samuel, the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. But you see, when I want us to pick the verse 7 again, and so we are going to relate every, every one of these chapters or verses that we read. We are going to connect every one of the verses that we read. We are connecting it to the verse 7 for our studies. Are you with me? And the child someone ministered unto the Lord. He ministered. It could mean he did. He was doing something in the church. It could mean he was an usher in the church. It could mean he was singing in the church. It could also mean he was preaching in the church. And someone ministered unto the Lord. Yet, the verse 7 says that he did not know the Lord. And so your knowledge about him is not connected to what you are doing for him. That is why that day will come. He will say, I don't know you. Clear off. Someone ministered into the Lord, unto the Lord. And yet Samuel did not know the Lord. And so you must move from, hey, I am doing this. I have done this. I am the one doing this and I'm the one doing that. No, it is important. But for you to build your relationship with him and for him to pour himself into your life, then you must move from, I am doing this. I am skillful in doing that. I am professional in doing that. And to come to the level where what is your knowledge about him? And so Samuel ministered before the Lord, yet did not know the Lord. Uh, 
The next thing I see here, and said, so then the word of the Lord was precious in those days. So it means that the second thing I'm seeing from this scripture, it means that Samuel had access to the word of God. Samuel had read the Torah left and right center. Samuel had studied the word and the word of the Lord was precious. It means that he had easy access to the word, yet Samuel did not know the Lord. It was quoting the scriptures left and right center, reciting the words left and right center. Quoting the word in and out. Notes from Genesis to Revelation. Knows where you can find where Luke chapter 4 verse whatever is. Knows where you can identify a scripture. There are people, the moment they pick up their, their, their Bible, they can tell you where this one is and where that one is. He said, and Samuel had access to the word of the Lord, yet did not know the Lord. And so your relationship with him must not just be by the reading of the letter. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Means he had access to the word of God. Yet Samuel did not know the Lord. The next one is in verse 3. And the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel laid down to sleep. The third thing I see from this scripture is that Samuel was sleeping in the church yet Samuel did not know the Lord. Your knowledge about him determines how great he pours himself in the level he pours himself in your destiny. You must come of age. You must rise up and and I understand that he said, and Samuel was sleeping in the temple, and yet Samuel did not know the Lord. You must grow from this stage to another stage. And what was so amazing to me, it was so amazing to me, the last one is that, and the Bible says that, and Samuel was sleeping by the of the covenant, yet someone did not know the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not about how the number of years you have spent in the church. It is not about what skillful, how skillful you are in the church. It is not about how great you are in the church. It is about your relationship with him. You remember the other day and Paul, after many years preaching the gospel, casting demons, healing the sick, doing all sort of miracles, signs, and wonders, According to theologians, he had been preaching for over 14 years. It was after he wrote the scripture that I may know him because there is something more about him. I don't just want to come and sing. I do not just want to come and play instrument. I don't just want to go to church. I don't just want to come and sweep and be usher or be protocol or be a pastor. Paul said that I, I, I want to know him. I want to have an encounter with divinity. It is not enough to be preaching. It is not enough to just be coming to church. It is not enough just playing instrument and singing or doing something. He said that I, I want to know him. I want to know him. Though I have been casting the demons, though I have been raising the dead, I have been healing the sick. He said that is not the focus. I want to know him. Your knowledge about him must increase. Your knowledge about him, you must grow. You must not stay in the same class. He said that I may know him oh, with all the signs and wonders and the supernatural that God used Paul to achieve. He said that is not the ultimate goal. It is not just about the singing. It is good. It is not just about preaching. It is good. But I want to know him. I don't just want to preach. I do not just want to go to church. There is something about him. I want to know him. Then the power that brought him out of the grave. I want to have an encounter with that thing that brought him out of the grave. I don't just want to be a Christian going to church. He said, I may know him and the power and I want to relate. I want to have fellowship. I want to have an encounter with that thing that brought him out 
out of the grave. That is the level God is calling you to. That is the level God is calling the church. I believe there was a time he has been with the disciples and they were casting demons and doing all sort of things. He says, from henceforth, I no longer call you disciples. I call you friends. It means your relationship with him must grow. You must move from one. You must not stay at the same class. You must not remain in the same level. You must grow grow maturely. For when Paul said, for we move from grace to grace. You cannot stay in the same level of grace. You must grow from glory to glory. You must advance in your spiritual life. Ladies and gentlemen, there is more God wants to use you to accomplish. There is more God wants to use you to do. It doesn't matter your age. You may be old to yourself. You may think I am too old. You may think I have done it all but there is more in you if you will avail yourself and connect yourself and tell him I want to know you I want to have an encounter with you, I want to serve you better, he said from henceforth I no longer call you disciples that is the state you are, it is enough, come out from that discipleship for Paul, for Peter said from henceforth we will know longer remain in the elementary teachings uh, that are the elementary teachings uh, that is hey Jesus was born in a manger that is fine he was born by a Mary that is fine his father was Joseph that is fine but you must not grow to the level where you understand why he was born in that manger you must grow to the level to understand why he was born from a virgin by a virgin if your knowledge is just about oh he was born by a virgin no, 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 no. You must grow. God is expecting to meet you. God is looking forward to catch you up. There is something he wants to use you to accomplish. But you are just not ready. He said he was sleeping in the temple yet did not know the Lord. It is not the number of years you have been in the church. No. It is not how skillful and how talented you are. No. It is important and it is counted. It is needed. It is essential. But that is not the most important thing to your God. He wants to use you to accomplish something specific. He wants to use you to accomplish something unique and you must avail yourself. Oh, for me, I can't do it. Oh, for me, I am too old. Oh, for me, I am too busy. Oh, for me, because of my health, God still wants to use you in whichever state you find yourself. There is something unique inside of you. You just have to rise up and tell the Lord, Lord, I hear you calleth me. What is it you want me to do? There is assignment for you. There is a tax he has for you. You must avail yourself that I may know him and the power that brought him out of the grave. You remember the man called Zacchaeus? Yes, he was a short man. A short man in his status. He couldn't even reach out to Jesus. But when the Bible says that he saw Jesus afar off, he realized by the virtue of the crowd around Jesus, he couldn't have gotten closer to Jesus. So listen to what Zacchaeus did. And that is what he wants some people to do. The first thing Zacchaeus did was that he did not allow his states and stature destroy and become a stumbling block. The first thing the Bible says Zacchaeus did was that he ran ahead of the crowd. You must go our, you must move above the crowd. You must go ahead of the crowd. It means you must back up your fasting life. You must back up your prayer life. Don't become too ladies. Don't become too gentle. Don't be entrapped by the things of this world where when God is looking for you, he can't find you. Don't be entrapped by your job, your profession, your education. There is something, even in your education, God still wants to use you to accomplish something. If you want to wait that oh, but then maybe school and I'm master, the devil will kidnap you from there. And so the first thing Zacchaeus did was that he ran ahead of the crowd. You must move ahead of the crowd. You gotta move. 
You must, you, you cannot stay in the same class forever. Do you know what will happen? It means that the, the, the enemy will have access to mock our God because of your inavailability. And so Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowd. It means you must take the bull by the horn. It means you must tell God, God, what is it you want me to do in New Direction Bible Temple? It means you must get to the place, Lord, I want to do something extraordinary. I want to do something unique. I want to do something glorious. I want to go beyond this level. I want to go beyond this just singing. I want to go beyond this just this preaching. I want to go beyond this level because there is more in him. There is more in him. Uh, if you want to wait till you give all birth by, uh, you want to give three or four, five. Oh, me I am going to school. Let, when I finish my school, and somebody saying that how do you need my I'm, ah, we've I've been living this essay for all these years. We travel all over the world. So we know we are talking about. We are talking about even in your busiest schedule, create a space for God. So Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowd. What does it mean? It means that, hey, if you can pray at midnight, get up and pray. Work on yourself at midnight. By the study of the Bible, get up at midnight and study. Prepare yourself. Fortify yourself with prayer and fasting. Read the scriptures. Position yourself. Lock yourself in the room. That is, means run ahead of the crowd. So when I'm come to sing on Sunday, my Saturday, I will not mess it up. I am come to sing on Wednesday, my Tuesday, I will not mess it up. I am come to sing on Friday. I'm coming to do Bible studies on Friday. I will not mess it. I will not take it for granted. I will prepare myself and tell God, I want to use you. I want you to use me to do something extraordinary. Even so Samuel ministered before the Lord yet did not know the Lord. And when Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowd, uh, do you know what he did? He was, his, 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 his um, height was still a problem. He was still battling with his height. That is what maybe you are going through. He was still battling with his status. Well, that is what probably you are going through. But the Bible says that then he climbed a tree. Zacchaeus was a rich man. He is a rich man. Man. He had money, and I want to believe a rich man wearing his nice outfit, uh, climbing a mango tree. I believe young people there will be mocking at him uh, and be laughing. I say, Hey, Papa, there is something wrong with this man climbing a rich man, climbing a mango tree, climbing a tree. Maybe that they didn't know the reason why he was climbing a tree. They may be mocking your process. They may, they may say, Are they mad? Why have you gone too slim? Why have you gone this way? It's because I'm waiting upon the Lord. Because I am trusting God. Stop being busy because God wants to use you. You are the one he wants to use you. There is something unique he wants to use you to accomplish. There is something special he wants to use you to accomplish. You, are, you must avail yourself in the midst of your health challenge. There is still something he wants to use you to do in the midst of your busy schedules. There is something still he wants to accomplish through you. And so Zacchaeus climbed that tree. People may be mocking at him. The young boys may be laughing at him. Say, what is wrong with this man? A rich man climbed. Yeah, can you imagine a rich man climbing the tree? Because nobody had any idea why he was climbing the tree. And they'll be mocking at him. Now, yes, the process may be uncalled for. The process may not look pleasant. The process may not look good. But you have the ultimate goal. You know what you want to see. You know where you are going. It is not because you want to meet a nice person, a good man, your boss or your manager, but it's because you want to have an encounter with El Elyon. Because you want to have an encounter with the Lion of tribe of Judah. So he climbed that tree. And then not that he wanted to pluck any fruit, but he just stood on the tree and they waited. Just I know the tree. Like, ah, this man, is there something wrong with him? Is he okay? He has climbed a tree. Not that, and we, I, I can imagine when there is no fruit on the tree. There's no fruit on the tree. There's nothing on the tree. 
and the man climbing the tree standing seated on the tree all that he was doing was waiting for Jesus but the revelation he had the Bible said that for he knew Jesus was coming that path he knew he had idea he had the revelation that Jesus was coming that way you must have that revelation he is calling us into excellence he is calling us into another level he is calling us into another state he is calling us into another height there is more in him he wants to use you to accomplish you must avail yourself you have been ranting around with gravity of gossiping and all sort of things all matter of things but understand there is something and it says Samuel was in the house of the Lord sleeping in the church yet did not know the Lord Amen. give a mighty clap of it unto Jesus <laughs> one day Jesus called his disciples and said sit down sit down he asked them who do men say I am? Oh my goodness. Who do men say who am I? Who people, what are, what are people saying about me? And he says, some said you are Jeremiah. The same disciples, the same church members. He says, some says you are Jeremiah. Some are saying you are Elijah. Some are saying you are this. Some are saying you are that. As soon as they finished, I said, are you done? Is there anybody want to speak again? I said, you are done. Who do you say I am? You. What about you? On which level do you know him? What about, he said, what do, what about you? How do you know me? You see, if you don't grow in him, you will still be seen like a Jeremiah. If you don't grow in him, you will still be seen like a Father Christmas. If you don't grow in him, you will see him like something else. If you don't grow in him, you will see him like a president. If you don't grow in him, you will see him like a something else. He said, who do you, who do, what about you? What about you? What you, how, how do you know me? And I believe there was silence in the camp. He said, hey, as I'm going to critical. Hey, at the magic, yeah, yeah, we, we never anticipated it. This thing, we never thought of it. Who do you say I am? So they were thinking and ranting and uh, speaking. They said, ah, you say it, you say it. Oh, but you say it, you know it. We know you always first. You say it. And he said, and then Peter stood up and said, You are the Christ. You are the Christ. Upon and then, then he said, You see, as soon as Peter said, You are the Christ, then he said, Upon you I will build my church. From henceforth, you become the rock. You see, so it means that your knowledge about him, as you grow in him, your state will not be the same. And when you grow in him, you will have advancement, you will have better chances. When you grow, you see, when Peter mentioned the reality of him, when Peter connected him to who he really is, your life will not remain the same. So don't say that, oh, I am wasting my time for the church. No. Don't say, I am wasting my time in prayer. Thank God he said, they that wait upon the Lord. He said, they that wait, your time wasting, your time waiting in him is not wasted. He said, they that wait upon the Lord. Sometimes it looks like somebody is clocking, somebody is working, but you have come in the church, seated in the church. You must come out better than that person. You must come out further than that person. They said, hey, king, we are not going to eat your food for the next 10 days. But after 10 days, when they brought them out, those who ate the king's food, then those who didn't eat anything, those who didn't eat anything, they looked better than those who ate the king's food. When you spend your time for the Lord, when you connect yourself to him well, 
they will not deny you. There is more in you. There is much more greater things he want to accomplish you to do. There is something unique. Gather yourself together. You need to grow in him. The storm being the same level you have been coming to church for the past three years. The storm being the same class of level you are in. Up to now, you've been in the church for the past five years and you are not doing anything. Up to then, for the past one year, you've been in the church then you are not doing anything. There is more in him. We got to grow. We must advance our knowledge in him. He said, that I may know him. Then the power that brought him out of the grave. That power that brought him out of the grave. I want to have experience with that power. I want to have an encounter with that power. I, I, I just don't want to be singing about his name. But that which brought him out of the grave. I want to exhibit it. I want to show people. I want people to experience that. I just don't want to preach. I want to demonstrate the power that brought him out of the grave. And today, this moment and hour, I see the Lord bringing the best out of you. Come on. I said, I see the Lord bringing the best out of you. I see the Lord bringing the best out of you. In the name of Jesus, your knowledge about him must advance. Tell yourself, I must advance. Come on, tell yourself, I must advance. You remember one day, Paul said, for the Jews seek for signs. <laughs> they require for signs. But the Greek seeks for wisdom. Mm. It means that you must not settle at one level. You must not just leave your destiny, the growth. Don't leave the growth of your spirituality to chances. Don't leave the spiritual growth of your destiny to chances. Because remember, the devil is working hard. The devil is doing everything possible to make sure you don't get to that level. But I pray that from today, you will get to that level. Come on, I say from today, you will get to that level. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there is something unique he's bringing out of you. You must get to the place where you are not just seeking for signs, but you are seeking for wisdom. You are not just seeking for material things. Yes, they are very good. I believe in them. Jeremy Bay, you only play Namedi Bay, but don't take it. But if I said, if, if I position myself that that is all, you could just come and mess yourself. But you must get to the place where you have availed yourself for him to use you to do something unique. Else you become like Samuel. He was ministry before the Lord. Yet he didn't know the Lord. He was sleeping in the church. You see how you are nodding. You are saying yes, yes. That is, that is how you, you are. Your knowledge about him. You have left it to circumstance. You have not positioned yourself when I go to Rome. I'll do what the Romans are doing. Samuel ministered before the Lord, yet did not know the Lord. So you see how the young man playing organ, playing it, playing it, playing it, playing it, playing it. That day will come and say, Lord, I played organ in your church. I said, Yeah, come on, come on. Say, said, But why? Why? You're not being fair to me. This person, I, 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 I was the one playing organ for him to be singing. Why, why, why are you telling me to? Said you, I don't know you. Said, but I did this. I did miracles for you. Said, I don't know you. I prophesied in your name. The way I come here and I prophesy, seeing things and seeing things. And the day that day comes, said, hey, gentleman, I don't know you. Mm. 
So no, but, but my, my father is the bishop. He said, eh, eh, so and so. I am married to the pastor. He said, and so. Your relationship with him must be on the personal level. And when you build your relationship with him, then you must begin to grow in him. Oh, for the past one year you've married, five years you've married, you're the same character. The same you, Adwana. The same you, Atona. The same you, Womanizer. Now. The same you, Drunkenness. Now. The same you, Gossiper. Now. The same you, Hot-Headed Person. The same you, Confucianist. Now. The same you. Nothing has changed about you. You have not allowed into preaching. Yeah, we preach software, preach Dickens, preach elders, preach all these people preach You are not allowing the word to change you and bring the best out of you. But still the same. Arrogant. You are still the same. There is much more things he wants to use you to accomplish. There is something greater he wants to use you to accomplish. I pray we will get to that stage where you tell him, Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, I want you to accomplish something unique out of me. Lord, I want you to use me to bring your glory unto you. Lord, I want you to make me a vessel of honor. Are you with me? You must position yourself. You must work on yourself. And so I'm closing right now. Someone ministered before the Lord yet did not know the Lord. Someone had access to the word of God yet did not know the Lord. Someone was sleeping in the temple yet did not know the Lord. And who can tell me the last one? What is the last one? Tell me the last one. I'm waiting for the last one. Okay, good. What is the last one? It was ministry. That is the first one. Someone ministered before the Lord and yet did not know the Lord. Number two, he had access to the word of God, yet did not know the Lord. Number three, sleeping in the temple, yet did not know the Lord. The fourth one. Good. I still want the fourth one. He was sleeping by the ark of the covenant. No, no, can't wait. <laughs> you see, we are, we see, we are in the same church. Anka, Ekai. Anka, Ekai. You see, in the same church. I said the fourth one was that someone was sleeping by the ark of the covenant. He was sleeping by God, yet did not know the Lord. Someone was sleeping by the ark of the covenant, yet did not know the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet right now and speak to him to tell him that, Lord, Holy Spirit, I want you just breathe your name upon me. I want to be a vessel of honor. I want your spirit to take full control over me. As a vessel, O oh Lord. As a vessel, O oh Lord. Speak to him and tell him, Lord, I in, in whichever state I find myself, just breathe your name upon me. Use me as a vessel I, that I may know you. Your first prayer is that I want to know you more than the level I find myself. 
I want to know you beyond this level I find myself. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. That breathe in me, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, that I may know you. Speak to him right now. Let the spirit of the Lord take full control, O oh Lord. Let the spirit of the Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. That I may know him and the power that brought him out of the... I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to make supernatural impact. 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 I want to make significant impact. Use me, Lord, as a vessel. Use me, Lord, as a vessel. Bring the best out of me. I want to know you more. 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 I want to have an encounter with you, Spirit of the Living God. Just breathe, just breathe upon me, Lord. Lika bruzi panda la la bosa kadaba, lika branda bidi bidi anta bada bada ba, yandi lele le bosa karana pada ba, kali abosa ba. Holy Spirit, work, work, work your way out in our lives. Puriya su karana da da da, yata bada brazi karana da da bada ba, kelele le bosa branda karana bada ba, yata bosu kabranda. Glorify yourself. Let your spirit take full in charge and take full control. Take full in charge. Take full control. Take full in charge. I wanna be a vessel of honor. I wanna be a vessel of honor. I want to 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 be a vessel of honor. As a vessel. 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 Minister to my spirit. Le karanda padaya. Le kaposa Branda padaba, li karozom pada branda padaba, manta ba karana pa li harada pa, li kapasa pada padaba. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands. The Spirit of the Lord said, "Who do men say I am?" Who do you say I am? Jesus. Who is he to you? Mm. Is he just somebody you want to pray to? Is he just somebody you just want to you sing about his name, preach in his name? What relationship do you have with him? Jesus. What encounter? You must talk about your encounter. Your encounter with him. Open your eyes and let me tell you something. The woman called Hagar. The secret is about your relationship. So if you don't have a cordial relationship with him, you will get stuck. So don't allow circumstance to kidnap you and cripple you. Don't allow circumstance. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to pray our final prayers. You see, I, 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 I don't know this face. I don't know you, but I see Amma written on your face. Do you know anybody by that name? You don't know anybody by name, but the Amma. 
But I see, do you know the body, have you heard of that name? Ama. Then the Spirit of the Lord had mercy upon me and carried me into that month called September. Who is September? You come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 